Hello, I'm trying to get my uh, um, camera right. Today I want to talk about, again, about the rapture. Why? Because I think every time I do a video about the rapture, I have more viewers than in um, during, I mean, for uh, all the other videos that I'm making. People are interested in the rapture. Why? Well, I guess they are happy for Jesus to return. We see what's going on in this world, and it is pretty bad. I watched some German videos lately, which I not very often do, but came across these um, German experts. One was a professor. His name is um, uh -oh, uh, Mausfeld. Okay, so it's he's called uh, um, Mausfeld. That's what his name is. He's a professor, a professor of psychology, but he really focused more on society, societal problems, and really the fall of our society, societies. He believes that we are ready for a, a, a breakdown or a collapse of our culture or our society. But he says this time it's going to be worldwide, worldwide. And he's just not sure if we can recover from it. And people, he is not a Christian. So what does a non-Christian, you know, what kind of hope does a non-Christian have? If he's saying humankind is actually uh, getting to a place where society just totally, again, has to start from the beginning. Because I'm sure that's exactly what he is saying. We're going to start again from the beginning. I don't want to say Stone Age, but at least a time, you know, with no technology. Interesting things. He's also saying, you know, how the elite has taken over. Of course, he's also saying how the U.S. government, whoever that is, has taken over this world. He sees from a social standpoint, cultural standpoint, he sees very much how the United States has become an empire and is dominating the whole world. And the people here in the United States are not even aware of it. Why? Because most people here in the United States are peace-loving people. All they want is make a living and have a good life for their family. And we have a bunch of elite that totally want to destroy all this basic, you know, things we have acquired and put us back really into a time of slavery. In Germany, it was not called slavery. It was called Leibeigen which is translated body-owned. I think I have mentioned that before. Body-owned. The body was owned by the elite in, during the time in Europe that was the ruler, where it was a king, an emperor, whatever it was, a duke, whatever, who had power over you. And you are, were owned by that person. They didn't call it slavery, but basically that's what it was. And this is what we're going towards again. 
Oh, yeah, sure. And this is what this guy says as well is, yeah, we're still believing in this fake democracy. See, in Germany, I think you can become very much more aware that we only have a fake democracy because that's what we have. It's just put it up there fake um, just to reel in the people and got them to work after the second world war that's all it is after the second world war the allies that's the english the french americans really they wanted to destroy germany the german people and then eventually they decided oh well maybe they would make pretty good work animals and in order for them, for the Germans to again work, 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 they had to offer them something too. And that was a good lifestyle. And they did offer them a good lifestyle and the Germans worked because Germans usually have a good work ethic. Now Germany is done or they are done with Germany, let's put it that way. They're still using them, of course, but it's coming to an end. The industrialization is coming to an end. And so now they're looking at other ways of making money, and I'm talking about the elite. And so they're not only collapsing, you know, Germany, which is really the backbone of Europe financially, but all of Europe. They're collapsing all of Europe. And once Europe collapses, they collapse the United States as an economy, as a culture. It's already happening. They have been working on this collapse for a long time. And we always say, oh, they're splitting us, right? Two groups. No. What they're doing is actually individualizing us. And they have doing that for years. So our sense of community that we need to work together and that we only can really survive in a community has been destroyed. Everybody for themselves. That's the motto of really the United States and capitalism. And this is how they isolate everyone from each other. And see, that way, people are not strong anymore. See, if you have a group over here and a group over here, they are strong and they may fight each other, but they're still strong with each other and they will survive as a group. If you isolate everybody, there is no strength. The elite can rule you. The elite can scare you because you have no support system. And I hope you understand what happened during the lockdown. That's exactly the end goal of what's going on. This guy also says, because he's a psychologist, He's saying that psychology has been used, which I know. I am studied psychology. I'm a mental health counselor. They have used psychology instead of bettering people. They have used it against humanity in order to control them. That's what the lead has done. They know exactly, they have exactly learned how in the world they're going to control people. More than ever, people, more than ever, are they experts in controlling people. They know exactly how to do it. They know exactly uh, how people, the sheep or sheeple, can be misled. Great deception is what Second Thessalonians 2 is talking about. But it's not just 
great deception, you know, within our society. It's great deceptions within the church that has started long, long time ago. Because we opened our doors to the enemy. And we didn't keep things clean. I talk about this all the time. So people, what does that have to do with the rapture? Well, it has to do with the rapture. Because before the wrath of God, the rapture is going to happen. And the wrath of God is something that nobody should go through. The wrath of God is coming because of the complacency of humankind. Because again, he has a discussion with somebody about, well, is it actually the people's fault or is it the elite's fault? Or is it really both of their fault? Because the people, the sheep, the sheeple, they have a responsibility in this too. They are just totally complacent and are okay with just satisfying their desires and lustful desires. And because that's what they're doing, satisfying their lustful desires, they become addicted to those less lustful desires. It's a drug. They always want to feel good. You know, you're not uh, content in yourself and with the life you have. You always need more, 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 and more. So what happened in the United States is we fed people what we call capitalism, right? That means more and more wealth. How can I make more and more money? How am I doing better and better? And people only go for that. And that way they become isolated from other people because that's all they're focusing on. And the elite could swoop in and use certain circumstances to take over. Like, for instance, the pandemic. If you know what happened during the pandemic, how much the wealth shifted, which already shifted before, but especially during the pandemic and the lockdown, the wealth shifted quite a lot. And the elite on top the 1% of what they call, they got even more wealthy and the ones on the bottom less or lost more of their health. I'm looking outside and they just ran a turkey down the road. I don't know. I wonder why the turkey is running. Anyways, I hope there's no mountain lion out there going after that poor turkey. But... This is what we're having today. Our society has become more and more corrupt. I'm not even talking about our moral fiber that has been destroyed. I'm just simply, as a human kind and as a society, human society, we are absolutely going the wrong way. And I don't know, does God, did God know from the beginning, of course he did, that every now and then, every 6,000 years, if you listen to some of the scientists, every 6,000 years, he has to bring a catastrophic event in order to stop humankind from destroying themselves. Very possible, because it seems to be, when we listen to some of these scientists like suspicious observers and others, that they, we are having catastrophic events every 6,000 years, extinction events. And there is a really great reset every 6,000 years. Some 6,000 years, it's worse than others when you listen to these people. And I have talked about suspicious observers. 
You can find them on YouTube. So we're going towards total breakdown of our society. It's already here. Absolute breakdown. And if you really think about it, yes, it has been going on. I mean, what, what we've been going through and the wars and, and the ruthlessness and the, what else do you want it? Uh, the evilness of societies has been there. Okay. But I think, again, God sees it coming to an end every 6,000 years. And we're getting closer to that extinction event. And people, God is not going to make us go through that extinction event. We're talking about extinction event like the flood. Noah could have not made it through the flood unless God gave him instructions how to build this ark during the flood this is how god really preserved humankind it's an extinction event and this is what we're going towards this is not tribulation we're going through tribulation right now this is an extinction event. And God has already prepared the way he is going to rescue or bring his people through that extinction event. He's planned it from the beginning of time. That plan is to build his new Jerusalem and put people in it, the people of God, the true followers of God. I am not talking about these Christians that call themselves Christians today and not talking about all these churchgoers that are ruthless, that are deceived, and they don't want to wake up. I see it over and over again. Look at my videos. How many viewers do I have? Really, I have more German viewers on my German channel than English channel. You tell me why that is. Tell me why the English-speaking people are more drawn to God's Word and are more drawn to deception. Why is that? I have maybe a hundred people watching my videos. Whereby with my German channel, I have about 700 average. Why is that? And I know Germans are just as lost as Americans, but maybe these English-speaking people, Americans, English, uh, Australians, and there's many people that speak English, right? They're not interested in the truth. They run after false teachers. Why is that? Because our society is already corrupt. They don't seek after God. And yes, they haven't been seeking after God for 2,000 years. Paul wrote it, right? Paul wrote it. No one, no one seeks after God. And why some? I guess the Holy Spirit draws everybody and some few just respond. And the big mass they don't care. But people, eventually, God has enough. And it's not that he has enough. I think he has just simply set the time. 
from the beginning, he set 6,000 years for humankind. After that, again, there's going to be a catastrophic event that is going to drastically reduce humankind. And of course, then there's always people that scream. Oh, why would God do that? Well, hasn't be hasn't be caught has he not been calling for a long time? Oh yeah, sure we're saved, right? Because Jesus died on the cross for us. Yeah, Jesus died on the cross. We cannot be saved without Jesus dying on the cross. Absolutely. Everybody is saved that way. From the beginning, starting with Adam and Eve, they knew Messiah would come and would die. The law of Moses didn't change nothing. It just reminded them that, hey, you cannot save yourself by doing the law. That's all that Paul says. You cannot do anything by keeping the law. And God says himself, your, your, your um, sacrifices are a waste. A waste. I just saw it the other day again. Uh, was it an Isaiah that he was saying that? It's a, it's a total waste what you're doing. And no, oh no, even these, should I say stupid, um, Zionist Christians, should I say that? I know I'm not supposed to say that word, but what can I say? Ignorant? Um, are they evil? You let me know. You let me know. What is wrong with these people that are still going to or continue to tell the Jews that it's okay for them to continue with the old covenant and are refusing to tell them you have to accept Messiah or else you're lost? I mean, what are they? Are they evil? Are they evil? Because they're misleading not only Christians or think people that think that are Christians, but also the Jews. I don't know. It's just extremely, extremely ignorant. I don't know. I don't know. But again, what is the point in what I am saying. I'm saying the point is that God's wrath is coming and don't let, don't even start talking about tribulation. Every time I talk about the wrath of God, people again use the word tribulation. No people, it's not tribulation. It's, it, it is a, a distinct, I mean, a extinction event that's coming. You understand that? Oh, it's not just tribulation, people. It's the wrath of God. The wrath of God is an extinction event. Of course, there are going to be some human beings left over and some animals. What do you think a pole shift is and the previous stuff that's happening before the pole shift? Did you ever read... Uh, Revelation 8 through 11 and Revelation 16 and okay read Revelation 14 and 15 have you read it's not tribulation who is being uh, persecuted during that time that, that's the least of anybody's worries it's the extinction event that's going to happen. And no, God is not protecting anybody. He's not protecting. Why? Because once the rapture happens, the foolish vir virgins, yeah, they will be left behind, but they have to go through this event just the same. They're not being protected. Why? Because they rejected Jesus. Why do you think they didn't go into the rapture? Because they ignored it. They ignored God before. They ignored Jesus. Jesus says, I don't know you. And so you think he knows them now afterwards? 
they're going to have to really um, show Jesus again that he can trust them. And maybe, hopefully, again, have a relationship with him. I don't know, but they can never be bride of Christ. But my teaching is constantly to warn people about this coming wrath. Because people have no idea what it is. These preachers, these dispensationalist preachers, they don't teach wrath of God. They teach, oh, there's going to be the tribulation coming after the wrath. No people. Or oh, after the rapture. Sorry. It's tribulation. No, it's not tribulation. That's not the main thing. We're going through tribulation right now. Every believer. Every believer. If you don't believe it, then you are not a true believer. You're not a true follower. The way God protects his people from the coming wrath is through the rooms Jesus is preparing right now. And he said that when in John 14, or was it John 14 or is it John 15? I keep forgetting. Where is it? John 14 or 15? It's John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. Where is the father's house? It's in heaven. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. This is what he says. He is preparing a place for us. That's what the bridegroom does. If you understand the Hebrew wedding that is exactly what the bridegroom does. He prepares a place for the bride. There's the betrothal, which is the actual marriage. Husband and wife, they promise to be a couple. Then the bridegroom goes, prepares a place for the bride. Then he comes and picks the bride up. And in my previous uh, video, maybe it was last video, I said clearly in Isaiah 26, 19 through 21, that this is the time of the resurrection. Before the wrath, when Jesus comes to pick up his bride and puts her in the hoopah, and the bride is hiding herself until the wrath of God is past until this extinction event is past. Yeah, it's going to be an extinction event. Do you really think you're going to make it through that? Yeah, keep prepping. This is what a lot of people do. This suspicious observer, this is exactly what he's doing. He is prepping. And he believes he's going to make it. Well, I think very few people will make it. Very few. I would rather be prepared that I do not have to go through this wrath of God and I can hide in the rooms that Jesus is preparing right now. And I know there's a lot of people that want to deny the rapture Never ever think about it. And of course, those are not the, um, what do you call them? The dispensationalists. But those are the ones that, yeah, Satan woke up 
Satan woke up, or maybe they woke up themselves and then they realized, wait a minute, dispensationalism is really wrong. But at the same time, when they woke up, Satan or one of Satan's workers was already there saying, oh, see, this stuff is all wrong. And so is the rapture. Well, the rapture is wrong, too. How can it be right? It's dispensationalism. And so these people, again, are being put into slavery right then and there. As soon as they try to come out of dispensationalism, another false prophet, false teacher is standing right there, picking them up and putting them just in another bin of slavery. Or another pin or whatever it is. Another prison. Why? Because they don't stop or they don't start reading the Bible. I came out of dispensationalism, people, and I had to read the Bible. I had to say, okay, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. I want to see where it is in the Bible first. And I'll tell you where, dispen where uh, the rapture is. It's in First Thessalonians 4. Nobody can deny that. Of course, then there's the false teachers that totally misinterpret First Thessalonians 4. I don't know what in the world they're saying. I don't know what they're saying. Oh, yeah, Jesus is coming at the end. What's the end? What end? Jesus is coming at the end of humankind. At the end of the time of the Gentiles. That's the end. That's when Jesus is coming to pick up his bride. Then we're going into the day of the Lord. And the first thing that happens during the day of the Lord is the wrath. So when is the rapture happening? At the end of the wrath? When nobody is really hardly left over? No, he's coming at the beginning. As soon as he comes back, the day of the Lord starts. This is when he's picking up his bride. You know, I actually had people saying, well, you know what? Uh, um, God disciplines his children. No, this is not discipline. The wrath of God is total what? Extinction level. Extinction level. He is destroying his enemies. And everybody who rejected him is his enemy, people. Okay, you have time during the wrath of God to, you know, if you really wake up and say, oh my goodness, what have I done? I miss the Lord. Yeah, you have a chance to maybe make it right and say, uh, you know, Lord, please forgive me. That's what the two witnesses are doing. They're wearing sackcloth because they missed the, the you know, the bridegroom. And so what are they doing? They're waking other people up and saying, hey, Jesus has come. And we're going through the wrath of God. And what are the people of this earth doing? Are they repenting? No, they're not. They're screaming and, and, and they are, uh, yeah, complaining to God. And they're killing the two witnesses. That's what they're doing. They don't wake up. Very few people wake up. Very, very few. People wake up. Wake up. The wrath of God is coming. And you better make sure that you are in a safe place. The place that Jesus prepares for us right now. That you are in a safe place and you can hide there. If not, I guess I'm not so sure if you will make it. 
I'm coming to an end. But you know what the worst part is? If you don't make it, you may end up in the lake of fire. Because are you going to wake up after the rapture? Will you wake up? If you don't want to wake up right now and say, oh, the rapture doesn't happen until who knows when. Why are you going to wake up later? When the Holy Spirit is gone. Right now the Holy Spirit is here and the Holy Spirit is drawing. That's this time period that we have, the time of grace where the Holy Spirit draws us. And when the bride is gone, that time is gone. It's going to be so much harder to realize the Messiah and to follow him. Wake up. Make sure you are in the rapture. Watch my videos because I show you clearly what you need to do to be ready. Or actually the Bible tells you. Read everything in the Bible it tells you. Over and over and over and over. It's not just, yeah, Jesus died for me. I say that over and over too. It is following Jesus. Follow. Follow. Jesus says, at one place, this guy came to him and says, what must I do to, you know, be in the kingdom of God or something like that? He says, sell everything and follow me. That's what Jesus says all the time. Follow me. Sell everything and follow me. I'm not saying you're supposed to be selling everything, but definitely follow him. Follow him. Yes, and it's hard. Those people that love money and love their job and love this world, they will have a hard time following Jesus. Because we have a tendency to make this world work. Oh, yeah. Coming to an end. Let the Holy Spirit guide you always.